It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Second Corinthians chapter 8, I just look at this one verse, verse 7, and Paul's uh, talking to these people about their generosity. Everybody say generosity. generosity. Verse 7, he said, Therefore, as you abound in everything, in faith, utterance, and knowledge, your diligence and your love does see that you abound in this grace also. So underline that in your Bible. Uh, we know that the Bible is God talking to us. We know the Apostle Paul's talking here to the believers. But he said, as you abound in faith, in your utterance, your preaching, your teaching, your knowledge, your diligence, your love to us, see that you abound in this grace also. So everybody say, this grace also. This grace also. So that means there's uh, different facets of the grace of God. And here Paul talking about this grace also. He's talking about the grace of God in giving are in generosity because he's commending them on how amazing their generosity was. He said, actually, you, were, you gave out of deep poverty. It's funny sometimes uh, how people that are poor actually think they're exempt from giving. I think it was Anne Frank who said, nobody ever became poor by giving. In other words, you can actually give your way out of poverty. So these people gave out of their deep poverty, and Paul was so amazed. And um, he said, now see that you're bound in this grace. He's talking about not just the grace of giving, but he's talking about the grace of God in the area of your finances. And so the Lord said to me, if grace is amazing in every other facet, it should be amazing in the area of your finances. Try that one more time. If grace is amazing, how I many know grace is amazing? Where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And so, where grace is amazing in all these other areas, and we love to talk about grace, Paul says, now there is a facet of grace, he said, that has to do with your finances. And he said, see that you abound in it. Other translations say, see that you excel in this grace. And so, when he says see to it, means you will not do it accidentally. See to it means you'll have to pay attention because it's important to God for us to abound in this grace. Amen. And he says, um, this grace, so the Lord said to me, when you abound in this grace, he said, then uh, you'll look at your checkbook and say, amazing grace. Or you look at your checking account and go, amazing grace. Come on, or you look at your house and you walk in and you go, wow, it's like a dream come true, amazing grace. In other words, it's not just natural ability, not just your education, but you know it's the blessing of the Lord. It's amazing grace. Praise the Lord. In other words, God's grace can be amazing in the area of your finances. And so I uh, learned a lot about generosity from my mom and dad and from Dad Hagen. And so um, Pastor Bruce Black asked Dad Hagen one time, said, uh, uh, if you're looking for a quality in a leader, if you're looking for a quality in a leader, what would be the number one thing you would look for? And he said, Dad Hagen said, generous. I mean, there's a lot of things you could say you want in a leader. But he just said, that's the first thing he said, generous. He said, because someone who is not generous will shut down the move of the Spirit of God. Oh, let's try that one more time. In other words, generous, he said, someone who's not generous will shut down the move of the Spirit of God. What does that mean? That means your generosity affects more than your money. Let's try that again. I said, your generosity affects more than just your finances. 
Hmm. So the Lord said to me one time, he said, if you'll be generous, a generous giver, he said, I'll do things for you money cannot do. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so uh, I think a lot of people actually think they are generous until they run into somebody that's generous. Getting quiet in here now. Somebody said, well, I'm just frugal. Frugal might be good at Walmart. It's not good at church. You don't want that to be the epitaph on your tombstone. Here lies stingy. I wish y'all got to see what I get to look at. But that's why I laugh sometimes. <laughs> that guy said, you don't scare me. I've been kicked out of better places than this. <laughs> um, there's something about generosity that the Bible is full of examples that got God's attention. Not just the rich people. Sometimes people that were poor. Actually, sometimes poor people can be more generous than rich people. Sometimes rich people say, well, all my money's tied up. A good funeral will release a lot of it. I'm saving it for a rainy day. You're going to have one. <laughs> you might as well be generous while you're still breathing and still alive. You'll actually get credit for it. So when it comes to generosity, it comes to giving. Dad Hagen said it this way. He said, um, if you don't talk about giving or money, then people think you don't need none. If you talk about it too much, then they get mad. So he was talking about the anointing and about giving, and he said, um, don't get me wrong. He said, I've been just as anointed in an offering as I was ever anointed in a healing meeting. Hmm. I've been in some of those meetings with him receiving offerings and honored on a few occasions that he asked me to come up and receive it and freaked out at the results. Because over years you give and then you start stretching. And so uh, uh, when he called me up and uh, I'd actually prepared a $50,000 offering and I got up there and we all got so happy and jumping around that I gave another 50,000. Had a little giver's remorse for the next few weeks. <laughs> And the devil said, what you going to do if that don't work? Uh, well, as I look back, um, that's probably about $40 million ago. So I said, uh, devil, what you going to do when it does work? So don't let the devil scare you out of the generous department. And so Paul said the way you access this grace in 2 Corinthians 9, as you access this grace, uh-huh, through sowing. Through sowing. He said, you so sparing, you so generous. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Let's read this while we're talking about this. And I won't, I won't take much longer unless... Andy, that was my tape. <laughs> Just always been helpful. So, <laughs> Was it flopping around? Thank you very much. I appreciate that. First Timothy chapter six. <laughs> I asked the Lord why people don't get happier during offerings. <laughs> because I was just preaching in Detroit um, for Bishop Keith Butler. And uh, what a great man, what a great church. And he had a man sitting on the front row while I was preaching. We was having a Holy Ghost meeting that's a little extra wild. 
And the man on the front row was just laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing. I didn't know he's Dr. Avery Jackson. Dr. Avery Jackson, um, brain surgeon, neurosurgeon, thousands of brain surgeries, and was just on Brother Copeland's uh, TV program. He was so full of joy, he was laughing. I didn't even know who he was, but we sure had a lot of fun. Later on, I found it was Dr. Avery Jackson. He said, when you study the brain, he said, um, the pleasure center of your brain actually lights up when you give. So if you're struggling with depression, <laughs> God designed your brain to be happiest when you're given. You're most like God when you're given. And so God designed you actually physically to enjoy life more when you're a giver. He said, your brain lights up. So you really don't need no marijuana. You don't really need to vape. You just need to tithe and sow generously. That'll light you up, man. You're like, somebody say, what you on? I'm on giving, man. I'm on giving. I can see some of you that never had that high. Don't give yourself away. <laughs> Something about generosity and giving that Jesus said, if you'll be faithful in that area, God will trust you with true riches. In other words, money is not really true riches. And bring none in, can't take none out. He said, but if you'll be faithful when it comes to money, amen. He said, I'll do things for you that are eternal. Y'all found 1 Timothy 6. Let's read this real quickly. 1 Timothy 6. And then Paul tells Timothy, because we're talking to pastors, we're talking uh, to leaders. So this is really leadership talk. And he says to Timothy, verse 17, 1 Timothy 6, 17, charge them that are rich in this world charge those that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Look at the next verse, that they do good, that they be rich in good works and ready to distribute, willing to communicate and to give. Uh, the Message Bible says, charge those that are rich. When he says rich in good works, says that they be extravagantly generous. Yeah. Amen. So we've studied that before, that anybody that makes thirty dollars or $40,000 a year is more rich than 98% of the people in the world. So a lot of times people say, well, you, know, you, know, you need to tell some uh, Warren Buffett about this. No, we're talking to you. And if you don't think you're rich, I mean, we're going to Nepal next week. And so people are very poor according to our standards. So we pay for everything for them to come to the meetings and take care of them. And some more just called in and said, can you pay our way? Because they can't afford to even travel. We said, sure, we're rich. <laughs> Amen. So he says, those that are rich, he said, charge them. And then he says, rich in good works, extravagantly generous. And then verse 19, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. Interesting, isn't it? So he says something about your generosity. He says people that are rich. I read this years ago, and he said, uh, talk to the rich people at church. So I didn't get upset about that because I found out, well, there must be supposed to be rich people at church. Once I find out there's supposed to be rich people at church, I signed up for the program. He didn't say, just talk to all the broke people at church. No, he said, talk to the rich people at church. 
the blessing of the Lord make you rich. And he says this, and God's the one that gives us richly all things to enjoy. So he didn't say you even have to be, feel bad about being rich. Let's try that again. He said you don't even have to feel bad about being rich. Actually, God's the one that gives you richly all things to enjoy. He actually wants you to enjoy abundance. He said the only requirement, like <laughs> Dad Hagen said, uh, the Lord told him, I, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to my people being rich. I'm opposed to them being covetous or stingy or deep pockets and short arms. A Rolex living and Timex giving. <laughs> and so, our Cadillac living and skateboard giving. I think T.D. Jake said, uh, don't dance better than you give. When it came to David's giving, First Chronicles 29, the Lord said to me, he said, a lot of people want to sing like David sang and dance like David danced, but they don't want to give like David gave. So there's something about generosity. Anybody can do it. Let's try that one more time. There's some, something about generosity. Anybody can do it. Amen. And he said, and it affects eternity. So apparently you can't take it with you, but your giving can send something ahead. All right, let's keep going. Praise the Lord. Y'all listening slow. It's just taking me a little while. And so I've been in some meetings where really tremendous joy and anointing broke out with such generosity. Joy. I've seen people dance all over the place and, and just sowing and giving. I thought, wow. And so I just thought, man, I want to stretch out. I want to give more than I've ever given. And so I, I saw the, the, I used to bring a certain amount, and then I said, all right, I'm going to get in that other line. I'm going to give the, that amount next time. And I got in that line. Praise the Lord. I found out why they got so happy. I said, how come people are not happier during the offering? The Lord said, most people just give enough to irritate themselves. <laughs> They're like, here, I hope that helps you out a little bit. <laughs> because true generosity will open your heart. Come on, if it'll light up your brain, it'll open your heart. Two things that open heaven and open your heart is the blood of Jesus and generous giving. Matter of fact, if you feel like you're not as close to the Lord as you used to be. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. I said, if you feel like I'm just not as close to the Lord as I used to be, how shall we return? Malachi said, you return with your tithes and your offerings or your giving. So you can actually give because it reflects your affection and it affects your affection. Or you can give and you'll refuse to backslide. You'll say, well, I was considering backsliding, but I gave too much now, I'm not gonna quit. <laughs> to break certain barriers in your giving and your receiving. So he said, if you sow sparing, you reap sparing. If you sow generous, you reap generous. And so I said, why don't people get happier during giving? And the Lord said, because they think you're talking about giving. I said, could you say that one more time? They don't get happier when you're talking about giving because they think you're talking about giving. Let's try that one more time. They don't get happier when you're receiving off. They think you're talking about giving. But the Lord said, you're really talking about your receiving because you cannot separate giving and receiving. 
So the lady that ran down Brother Copeland and tried to embarrass him on television and size of jet he had and uh, size of house he had, and while she was, you know, trying to put him on the spot and embarrass him, he said, you know, we gave $25 million last year. Did you know that lady never repeated that? In other words, most people are happy when they know you're giving. But when you start receiving, the problem is you cannot separate giving and receiving. Because he said he gave $25 million last year, but now she's saying, look at the results of what's going on here. Let's try that one more time. I said, look at the results of what's going on here. In other words, God, the Lord said it to me this way. He said, I did not design tithing or giving or sowing for you to decrease. Well, I thought, lay hands on my head right now. God said, I did not design tithing or sowing and giving for you to have less. He said, I actually designed the tithing and the giving for you to increase. Praise the Lord. You ought to get happy right now. In other words, why don't people get happier during the offering? Because in the Old Testament, man, they danced and ran and jumped and shouted. So the Lord said, don't think about just what you're sowing. Think about the kind of harvest that's going to come in through that kind of gift. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Galatians 6.10 says, As we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto those that are of the household of faith. The good news is anyone can participate in God's generosity plan. We have to look for the opportunities he gives us to sow our seed. The generosity of a believer affects how they receive the word. When you give, it not only reflects your heart, it also affects your heart. In his book, How to Receive God's Extravagant Generosity, Mark Hankins shares how your spiritual breakthrough may be just as connected to your giving as well as your praying. God will do things for you that money can't do when you're a generous giver. As a bonus, you'll also receive the four CD set, How to Receive God's Extravagant Generosity. This teaching will help you understand how God wants everyone to reap the benefits of his plan for generosity. In this four CD set, Pastor Mark shares four powerful teachings, God's extravagant generosity, a whopper of a harvest, extreme giving, abundant living, and generosity the way to increase. Discover how with God, over and above giving will produce over and above living. Get the book and CD set today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers worldwide. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and become strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your love seat will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and serve as our new television studio. You will receive the book and the four CD set, How to Receive God's Extravagant Generosity for your gift of any amount. You also can download these messages as MP3s in our app for free. For more information, please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Trust you enjoyed the program today. Of course, one of my favorite subjects in the Bible is simply generosity, or we also call it supernatural increase. Because sometimes people think, well, the Bible's just talking about people giving, but really, the Lord said, I'm really talking about your receiving. Because he talks about sowing, and he says, and your generous sowing 
will produce a generous harvest. Well, I was sure interested in that generous harvest. And so I began to study on generosity and giving and supernatural increase. And wow, the things that opened up from the word of God on the possibilities and the promises and even the word that God said that the generous soul shall be abundantly blessed. So I began to study generosity because a lot of times people think they're generous till they run and somebody's generous. Or you could say it this way, God's the most generous or the biggest giver. And actually the Lord said to me, he said, if you'll get addicted to giving, I'll support your habit. Or your sowing will outperform your saving. Or the Lord said to me, uh, I'll do things for you money could never do. There's something about generosity that just opens up the heart of God. God loves a generous, cheerful, happy giver. And there's something about that giving and sowing that God said, I'll multiply your seed zone. And most people are thinking subtraction and God's thinking multiplication. So I encourage you to get this book. I'm telling you, it may, it may look a little bit funny at the beginning, God's extravagant generosity, but I'm telling you, there's something about it. I love the Proverbs 11, 24, the message Bible says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. And you get this, it'll tell you how to break certain barriers in your giving and your receiving and how to receive God's best blessing because there is no shortage to God's giving. Come on, sometimes we limit to him and we're not able to receive what he has for us. And the Lord told me that one time and how to open up to receive. So if you'll just simply get this book and we'll go through, it'll teach you how to give, how to sow in expectation, how to get happy about your giving and how to see a harvest, a whopper of a harvest come in so that you'll be a testimony of the grace of God, that God will make all grace abound toward you. Wow, what a promise that God will make all grace abound toward you. You have all sufficiency in all things abound to every good work. Look at this, God's extravagant generosity. So I encourage you to get the book. It'll teach you how to go up to a whole new level of receiving from God and also get the CDs or you can download them online. And I encourage you as you do this, your faith for finances, and you'll see supernatural increase, not through some sort of a gimmick, but simply feeding on the Word of God. So I encourage you to get this, and all week long we're talking about God's extravagant generosity. May God richly bless you. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.